Hello, I think it's live. I'm not sure. All right, so <laughs> I think it's live. We will see. Um, I can't see it. So I never know when I'm live other than it just says I'm live. So let me just pull up my phone so I can see. Okay, it looks like I am live. Cool, cool. All right, so for anybody. Hello. All right, now I can hear myself. I can't right, see it. All right, so we got it together. All right, so my name's Raven Woods and I am the CEO and founder of Autism Mama Rocks, the IEP. And I help parents gain the knowledge and confidence to become the CEO of their IEP meeting. So with that said, um, I'm really excited about today's tip of the week. As you guys know, I never give just a tip. I can't help myself. <laughs> So um, I have three things that I want you to um, keep in mind um, that are very important um, in your IEPs, okay? There's three things that you must focus on in the IEP, okay, that are important, that um, is all part of the stress and everything that you're going through. There's certain things that we kind of lose track of because we have so much anxiety and things going on that we kind of lose focus of the things that we're really in there for because you know, you've got gaslighting going on by the staff or a member of the staff. Um, that's a video we've done before, which is basically when the school system or a staff member um, gaslights you, which is makes you feel like what you're saying is not okay or inappropriate, or they make you second guess yourself. And I'm really big on if you ever feel like you're second guessing yourself in an IEP meeting and that's how they're making you feel, that not only do you need to put a stop to it and halt the meeting to put a stop to it immediately, but you also need to be aware that your gut trumps everything. It's, it's just kind of a mother's, a parent's intuition. And, you know, we can go to sleep at night and it's that gut feeling that's that's keeping us awake or, you know, that gut feeling that keeps kind of going through our mind and we just can't kind of let it go. That's that feeling that you never want to let go. Don't ever second guess yourself or allow somebody to influence the way you are feeling. It doesn't matter about other people's thoughts, opinions, if that's something that is about your child. Um, if you think about it, you know, honestly, um, when people are pregnant or other things in life, everybody's got an opinion, right? But there's certain things that we just have to, we can take things in and we can process them. However, you don't want them to trump your gut feeling. You, got, you guys always got to go with that, okay? So for any of you who are just now hopping on, welcome. If you're new, post a one below. You guys know the drill, oldies but goodies. If you're an oldie but goodie, post a two below and post who you are, where you're from so that we can get to know each other. So again, if you're new, welcome. Post a one below so that I know who you are, that you're new, introduce yourself and let me know where you're from. And oldies but goodies, always say hi, post a two below, let me know how you guys are doing. Um, and also for you newbies, we have a group that's amazing. Um, so if you ever wanna go check it out, it's Autism Mama Rocks the IEP group. We do do a Tuesday question and answer session. And today, again, stick with me, we're gonna talk about the three top things and main things that you really need to focus on in your IEP. So. With that said, we're going to get started. I'm checking out the Facebook, see who's on, wait a little bit just to have some people hop on, and then we are going to get started. Um, if you want to post how your week's been, how was your weekend? I loved seeing the pictures over on the group for those of you who are my oldies but goodies. Post pictures all the time. I love, love, love seeing your children's pictures. It's so nice to see. So I'm scrolling here. People are still hopping on. Um, and so we'll get started in just a second. So I'm looking on my phone so I can make sure because I see like a lapse. 
So I can't see everything that I need to see on a stream. So with that said, we're gonna get go ahead and get going here. And we're gonna talk about, if you guys have not heard yet, three things that are important in the IEP, okay? So I want you to just get your notes out like I always tell you to do, um, and we're gonna go through this, okay? So again, for those of you who are just now hopping on, my name is Raven Woods. I'm the CEO and founder of Autism Mama Rocks IEP. I help parents gain the knowledge and confidence to become the CEO of their meeting and their IEP so that they truly rock their IEP and they know what they're doing and they're focused and they get it done. Okay, so hello, Sarita. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we're going to talk about the three things. This is the tip of the week. This is short, sweet, to the point, and done, okay? Um, again, tomorrow's the question and answer over on the group, Autism Mama Rocks IEP group, and then Thursday, of course, is the content right here. So the first of the three things that you need to focus on in the IEP is number one, meeting your child's academic, developmental, and functional needs that result from their disability. So we talked, we talked about this a lot over on the group this past weekend. Um, a full in-depth conversation went on on the group in reference to um, what is important to not only request and ask for, but what is the key things that need to be focused on and what is it that we say in the right way? Because again, our verbiage is key. So if you say something in the wrong way, it's gonna be taken that way and they'll say no. You know, If you learn to say it in the right way, there's, there's ways that they're still gonna say no, but there's ways that you can go about it to make sure that you can turn that around, okay? So number one thing to focus on in your IEP is to make sure that whatever you're requesting meets their educational needs, the functional needs, the developmental needs, and their academic needs, and that that impacts their disabilities. So for example, if um, your child has autism or cerebral palsy or um, Down syndrome, okay, their disability is not a reason to get an IEP as we've discussed before, and we're not going to go into that today. But the impact of disability is where special education comes in. So make sure when you request anything that it has to do with the impact of disability and that your child's academic, developmental, and functional needs are focused on, okay? So that's number one. The second thing that you need to focus on in the IEP, because these are the three things that are important in your requests in reference to what services, what accommodations, what modifications are made in the IEP, okay? So the second thing is allow your child to be involved in the general curriculum and progress, which is mainly LRE, okay? So for those of you who don't know what LRE is, that's the least restrictive environment. And so what that means is you want to make sure, if at all possible, if it's okay, because each child is different, okay? We've talked about this before, not all children do well in a least restrictive environment. Some children learn better in a more restrictive environment. So you know your child. So number two is allowing them to have the opportunity to be involved in the general curriculum, but they must progress. So whatever accommodations, whatever services, whatever modifications have to be made so that they can progress in the least restrictive environment and that be allowed to them and be available to them is important. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is making sure to meet each of the other educational needs that result from your child's disability. Okay, so there's other needs that they need met for example, educational um, and behavioral, okay? So behavioral affects education in a major way, okay? So that would be considered other educational needs, okay? Because it's something that's impacting them in the education and in their education. So you need to make sure 
that those accommodations, modifications, services, et cetera, are made in reference to the behavior or whatever the needs are, the other needs, so that they're taken care of, okay? So we'll go through that one more time, okay? The three things you need to solely focus on in your IEP in reference to your request, okay? There's other things that you're gonna talk about. There's other things that you're gonna address. You have goals, you have all these things. But these three things are what's going to get you the services, the accommodations, and the modifications that you need, okay? So again, let's go through it one more time. The first of the three is making sure your child's academic, developmental, and functional needs result from the impact of disability, okay? So make sure that all those needs, educational, or you could say academic, functional, and developmental, okay? That those needs result from the disability, okay? Because that's what's going to get you accommodations, modifications, services, okay? Because we're going into the IEP, we're requesting these things, well, your child, you have to make sure that they fall into that category of where their developmental, academic, and functional needs um, are needed so that they can get the proper services, accommodations, and modifications in their IEP plan, okay? The second thing you wanna focus on is allowing them to be involved in the general curriculum and progress. What that means is the least restrictive environment and being in the restrictive, least restrictive environment, you need to make sure that your child is progressing. And if they're not, modifications need to be made. You need to be open to change. And some children do learn better in a more restrictive environment. However, you can still give them that least restrictive environment in other settings. So for example, it could be PE, it could be you know recess, it could be math because they're good at math, whatever it is, um, you can still put them in the least restrictive environment and the general curriculum and they still progress if it's an area in which isn't going to impact them that they need more additional help. So for example, if they really struggle in math, then maybe math needs to be in a more restrictive environment, but yet they don't struggle in science. So science can be in a more general curriculum. So be open to where your child is learning and accommodate that. Be open to the fact that the least restrictive environment is not always ideal, okay? The third thing is meeting each of their other educational needs that result from their disability. So what that means is whatever other issues that may be present in reference to their disability that's impacted from their disability, you need to focus on that as well. So like I said, I gave you an example of behavior. Behavior can impact education and behavior is typically a result of the disability. So as long as you can conjoin, uh, join them um, and the impact of disability can be led into what you're requesting, it will work out. Okay, so it's just asking things in the appropriate way. Okay, so again, meet your child's functional, developmental, and educational needs, number one, and make sure that the impact of disability um, is focused on there. Okay, so meeting their academic, functional, and developmental needs, it has to result from the disability. Okay, the second thing is get them involved in the general curriculum where they do best, put them. Okay, so if they don't do good in math and they need extra help, put them in a more restrictive environment. Be okay with that. Be open to where they're going to learn, but always put them in the least restrictive environment and more in a general curriculum and other things. And again, that can be recess. That can be math if they're good at math. It could be science if they're good at science, where like say they're good at science, but they're not good at math put them in the general curriculum for science and put them in a more least restrictive environment and a more restrictive environment, I guess I should say, for math, because that's where they're going to learn better. And this is all about their education and them progressing. The goal is for them to become 
adults that can be productive and have jobs and so forth. And we can't judge that now. You know, most of us can't. We have hopes, we have dreams and everything for our kids and we just don't know. But typically we just can't judge that. And we want to have high expectations of our kids, just like we expect that of the school, right? So Sarita says, um, hi, Kylie from Iowa. Um, okay, I'm beginning, he's only five. They said he um, had cognitive issues, I'm guessing, at 11 months, okay. So welcome to the club. <laughs> um, it's sometimes pleasant, sometimes not. Most often it's not. But um, as you begin to go through this process, you will slowly and gradually improve as you go and practice. And um, we will get you there, OK? Um, so focus on those three things, guys. Always make sure, I'm going to say this again, because it's been posted on my page. It's been posted a lot. And I want the right information going out there that disability does not guarantee you an IEP, okay? The disability will give you opportunities for your children to get other types of services outside the educational setting. It does guarantee that, but it does not guarantee you special education. Okay, and that's a misconception that many people have that, oh, my child has this, this, and this, so they automatically qualify for special education. Remember, it's solely focused on the impact of the disability. So your child's academic, functional, and developmental needs need to be impacted by the disability. And as long as that is something you can prove, which is typically not so hard, if you follow my program and focus, um, and then allowing them to have the opportunity to participate in the general curriculum is key because kids learn from other kids. They mimic other children and they mimic each other. And for them to be around general education and you know the typical child, um, I guess you could say it like that. I hate those words because what is a typical child? What is normal, you know? Um, that's such a huge expansion of a word that I don't even know how to generalize it. So, um, but if you just think about it in the special education setting, it's general curriculum, typical children, um, special needs, et cetera. Um, and you just have to focus on getting them out there and involved in, in as much as you can and they're able to do. Um, but just, again, I just want to instill this in you guys that as parents, we have all those emotions and feelings going on. And I had to learn myself because I know where you are to get over myself. I had to learn how to get over it myself because I was like, no, my child is not going to go in a restrictive setting. They're not going to do math in a restrictive setting. They're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. And it just wasn't doing her justice. You know, she truly was not learning. And so I want you to be open as difficult as it may be at times to other options. Okay. Again, look at the whole picture. If they're good at math or good at science, then put them in the general curriculum for that. If they're bad at math or bad at science, put them in a more restrictive environment for that so they can learn better and get to grade level and do better, okay? Because that's gonna help them feel better about themselves, okay? And when you want to meet and discuss each of their other educational needs um, that result, again, from their disability, everything goes back to the impact of disability. Don't ever go into an IEP meeting and say, this is what's best for my child. Never, ever, ever say that, okay? And it's going to almost want to fly out of your mouth because it's natural. We all want what's best for our kids. So just know that you have to learn the verbiage. You have to understand that everything, everything, everything pertaining to your child's education and then them obtaining services the accommodations, 
and the modifications, okay? All of that goes into supporting them in the educational setting based off their disability and the needs that they may need met. And those needs can be a one-on-one. -on -one. It can be more time on a test. It can be um, they, they have extra um, hours to work on things, you know, as far as, you know, what they're working on in class, that it's not a rush, rush thing because kids, they're moving along pretty quickly. So you want to make sure that um, whatever accommodation, it could be that um, they need an iPad to be able to communicate better. Um, whatever it is that they need, those accommodations, modifications, and even services that are OT, PT, speech, et cetera, need to be put into their IEP plan and needs to be implemented and followed through, okay? So just make sure that those three things are covered and that you focus on what is going to get them um, the best education they possibly can have and all their needs be met in the process, okay? So for any of you who have questions, I'll check those out. Um, for anybody who's hopped on, my name's Raven. I am the CEO and founder of Autism Mama Rocks IEP, and I help parents gain the knowledge and confidence to become the CEO of their meeting. So with that said, um, today was the tip of the week. If, you have, if you're just jumping on, go watch the replay. We talked about the three core things that you need to focus on in your goal in the IEP, okay, of what you want to accomplish and how that can be accomplished and the things you really need to say and also consider. So Sarita, so can I have another IEP meeting? If I absolutely, you can have another IEP meeting if you already had one. Um, I talk about this a lot. As many of you guys know, I have a course coming out very soon. I wanna say we're finishing up the last touches. I wanna say about five weeks. If you have not gotten on the waiting list, go to autismmamarocksieep.com, click on educational vault, get on the waiting list. You are not going to want to miss this. And only for three days, I'm giving it to you for completely half off. Um, and in this program and in my course, I'm literally teaching you from the very beginning, from no school yet ever, to literally being evaluated and identified and the disability being put in there, and even them getting a diagnosis all the way to the end. Okay, literally to the end. I mean, I include private school. I include everything you can possibly think of. I put my almost 13 years of experience into this six week course with um, six different modules. And within each module, you have lessons. Um, some have two lessons, some have three, some have four. Um, but it's a very in-depth course that walks you step by step through this whole process. And instead of me going live and, you know, giving you tips and tricks here and there and content here and there, it gives you everything. You get um, the PDFs, the PowerPoints, everything in my vault on top of it. Plus you get live Zoom chats with me as well. So going back to the question, thank you. Um, for the hearts. I love that. I appreciate it. Um, make sure you press your notification button so you know when I go live because you never know what I'm going to talk about. And it's always important things in reference to IEPs. And I also always at least answer some questions. If you want a whole hour and 15 minutes of me answering questions, you must go over to the group because that's every Tuesday from eight to 9.15. And it's literally question and answer. That's all it is. There's no content really given other than me responding to your specific questions. So I guess you can say content's given. And it's very detailed to whatever your question is, okay? I will literally give you your step-by-step -step of what you need to do, okay? Um, you're also welcome to set up a 15-minute free discovery call with me. That's also on the website. If you want me to post it below, let me know. Um, 
And in reference to Sarita, absolutely, you can set up an IEP meeting. You can literally leave your IEP meeting and schedule another one. And it has to be scheduled within 30 days. That's law. So I did that a lot. It's, it's actually something I encourage because eventually they're going to get sick and tired of seeing you and realize that you're not going to give up, that you're not going to stop. You're not going to let them intimidate you. You're not going to let them gaslight you or bully you. So, you know, with that said, yes you can literally, and I've done it hundreds of times, um, you literally leave your IEP meeting, you want to take a breather, go do yoga, relax, whatever it is that you do to chill out and get your thoughts together. You're also going to then take the next day to re-listen to your recording. That's why it's so important to record because I literally teach people in my, um, planning sessions, my one, two, and four hour, I teach you how to literally minute by minute go over your recording and what's crucial to write down, what's crucial to pinpoint, um, what part of the recording you'll say, okay, from 3.5 to 7.2, this is core information. Um, I, I want you to always record your IEP meeting. So the next day after you cleared your head, you can go through it minute by minute, write your questions, answers, um, details down, who said what, why they said it, what was your question, et cetera, because then you're going to put an email together. Okay. You're going to put the email together, which you can also go to my vault and grab the email um, template. And um, I give you eight emails and I'm always adding to it. So anybody that's bought the email template, I think it's like, I don't know, it's cheap. Um, whoever's bought the email template, if I ever update it, you always get the update. It's sent to you through your email. Okay. So um, just remember to always, if, if an IEP meeting didn't work out the way you want it to, you definitely need to request another one within 48 hours. So then your next IEP meeting is then 30 days from then. And you're going to state that in the email and you're going to say things didn't go as I would have liked. And the needs of my child are not being met due to the impact of disability. Um, we need to have another IEP meeting within the next 30 days. Um, and I look forward to three or four different dates to choose from and three to four different times to choose from. I look forward to hearing back from you within the next three to five school days and or you can say just calendar days, um, which is more ideal. And but either way, from the minute that email goes out, your 30 days start then. So even if they got back to you six days later, that 30 days started when you sent that email. Okay. And so I typically say, you know, in three days, if they haven't responded, then you're going to send a more aggressive email. Okay. So Sarita, hopefully I answered your question. So we have Kylie who said, we're getting ready for our <clears throat> re-evaluation. Is that your three-year re-evaluation or is that your, are you asking for a year? What are you asking for? Because you said for preschool. So what do you mean re-evaluation? Um, and try to get OT services to help him since he's autistic. <clears throat> All right. So that's, I'm going to tell you where you went wrong there. Is that okay? So Kylie, I'm going to call you out here. And I'm going to tell you what you wrote me is written wrong. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> So you said, we're getting ready for a reevaluation. So my question to you, that's not what you did wrong. So my question to you is what reevaluation? Okay, typically there's a triennial evaluation, which is every three years, or parents can request an evaluation by law every year if they so choose, which you should. So um, tell me what kind of evaluation and why it's called a reevaluation. Um, so that's my first question. Um, but where you went wrong, okay, is where you said, we're trying to get OT services because he's autistic. You don't get OT services, which is kind of what I just said in those three things, because he's autistic. They don't care if he's autistic because the first comment they may say is, well, he doesn't act autistic here, right? So 
you want to make sure that that verbiage is taken out, take it, forget about it, okay? You wanna say something like, we're having a reevaluation, but make sure, and on my vault, I also have an evaluation and IEE guide that walks you step-by-step -step through the evaluation process from beginning to end. Um, that's an important item to have because it literally goes through the whole process and the legal aspects of it. Um, so when you go and get a reevaluation, I'm assuming it's from the school. So Kylie, I don't know if you're still on here, but if you can respond to the reevaluation question and then let me know um, what, what you're trying to evaluate here. And so also, Kylie, I want you to focus on um, going and getting an IEE as well. So if the school's evaluating your child for OT services, that's great, they should, but you need to also go get a private IEE evaluation, okay? So what that means is you're gonna now have two evaluations, which is completely ideal. You don't always want to go off of the school's evaluation. You want something to compare it to. Okay, so you'll have the school's evaluation, which they have 60 to 65 days, depending on your state, to do the evaluation and then present you with the results and hold that meeting. Okay, so 60 to 65 days for the whole process of this evaluation. Okay, then you, depending on how long it's been so far, you more than likely can call around and get an occupational therapist to do an evaluation of your child. And typically within one to two weeks, they'll get you the evaluation. And you can normally ask them to rush it because you're having a meeting, an evaluation meeting. So I would definitely call tomorrow and find out um, who you can go to. Um, most either Medi Medicaid or um, regular insurances cover services, but um, private insurance covers it to like a cap amount. So um, depending on your insurance, it is covered. So whether you have Medicaid or you have <clears throat> your own insurance, or if you have both, then it is covered. You just have to, if you just have Medicaid, you'll have to call them and find out who, who is on their list. <clears throat> and sometimes when you have private insurance, you have to do that too. So get your child into a private evaluation for an occupational therapy um, evaluation, and they'll also, they'll do everything, they'll talk to you first, they'll ask you what your concerns are, what he's doing, et cetera, et cetera, and then they'll evaluate him for about 30 minutes, and then they will draw up a conclusion and um, a plan of action um, based off what his needs are, okay, and um, then they can also, and per your request, put in there how these, him getting occupational therapy will increase his ability to learn and how it can actually decrease his ability to learn, okay? So those are questions, which is in my guide, um, that you want to make sure you ask. So you want to make sure you get a separate evaluation. You wanna make sure that you ask the right questions so that everything that you need, not just the evaluation from them, but the things you specifically need are how him having occupational therapy um, issues, okay? That is a long list of things that you have to kind of qualify for and what occupational therapy does um, is so, it's a big span of things. You know, a lot of people think it's just writing and handwriting and how you hold a pencil and stuff like that. It, it includes so much more. It includes tying shoes. It includes cutting, you know, and you can actually get it um, approved by the school for them to have like a butter knife or whatever. Um, at, because typically in schools, there's, you know, policies in, in reference to that, but you can get that overrided um, based off the needs of your child because that's an actual functional need, okay? So these are things you need to know and understand so then you can, re, you can request them for not only the private provider who's doing the occupational therapy, private IEE evaluation, but you also can make sure the school system is evaluating those things as well. So then you are getting the whole picture, which is the whole purpose of an evaluation. So hopefully 
instead of just asking your school to do an occupational therapy evaluation, I really hope <clears throat> that because he's five, and I'm guessing he's now going from preschool to elementary school, that you requested a full and extensive evaluation. So what that means is they do the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> so they do, does he need OT? Does And you need to specify this. This is also in the IEE guide and evaluation guide, all my educational vault on the website. It goes through what you need to request. So you need to request that full, conclusive, extensive evaluation. And then you can say, I want speech. I want occupational therapy. I want physical therapy. I want dance therapy. I want reading. I, whatever it is, psychological, all these things that you want to have evaluated, what you do before he goes into school. You don't want to just give him occupational therapy, okay? Yes, extensive and comprehensive, okay? Comprehensive is more it being put all together and how it's impacting the educational need, and extensive is the whole thing, okay? And you want to use the word full as well, okay, a full evaluation and individual evaluation of your child, okay? So you want to make sure that you're requesting the right evaluation and never really just request one thing unless your child has had a full and extensive evaluation and you only need one thing focused on after that. Okay, so that's the only time that you're going to request one thing like OT, PT, speech, et cetera. Okay, um, you'll also request that if they ever say, oh, we don't think he needs this, then you can again get an IEE, an individual evaluation, to then again put the two together because by law, the school system has to consider the other evaluation. The only thing you need to know too is um, the only, the way they can argue an evaluation, an IEE, okay, a private evaluation, is if it's not in accordance to IDEA, okay, which is law. So you need to make sure if you're going to a physical therapist or occupational therapist or a reading specialist or whatever the specialist and service you're wanting, you need to make sure that they're licensed you need to make sure that that is what their background is in, and you need to make sure that they're highly qualified, okay? So I always suggest people um, and parents to require five years experience. I'm kind of a stickler with that, you know? Um, when you're first learning those first three years, you're kind of new, and even in writing an evaluation, it's not always how it needs to be. So at five years, you're kind of at that, you're still early on, but you're at that point where you've got it down. And so I always suggest that whatever service you're requesting, that you request that the, the individual be highly qualified, licensed and certified in their area. So if it's a physical therapist, they have a license in physical therapy and also it's even better if they have extensive or highly qualified and they're, they are highly qualified and trained in certain disabilities. So for example, they can say, yes, I'm an occupational therapist. I've been an occupational, a licensed occupational therapist for five years now, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, their experience, but they can also say I've worked with 500 kids who have autism. That's highly qualified, okay? So you want to make sure that that's covered so the school system cannot then come back to you and say, oh, no, 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 that doesn't count. That is not something we're gonna take into consideration because the occupational therapist was not highly qualified. The occupational therapist was not licensed. Do you know what I'm saying? So make sure that you have all your um, T's crossed, your I's dotted, et cetera, okay? Um, so Kylie didn't really get back on. So hopefully she watches the replay. Sarita says, yes, that's what they said today on the meeting when I asked about having OT, why was asked why you need OT. <clears throat> okay, so, um, and then Nancy, hopefully I answered your question. 
Um, I'll answer 902. I'll answer one or two more questions and then I'm going to hop off here. Today's just the tip of the week, y'all. Um, but tomorrow over on the group is the hour, hour and 15 minute question and answer session. It's specific to question and answers. Okay. I can't help myself. So I answer your questions on tip of the week and I answer questions on content, which is, you know, on Thursdays, but really the question and answers are special for my group members on Tuesdays. Um, so if you want to post two more questions, anyone, if you are just hopping on or um, you're still on, I will answer up to two more questions. And um, so Rita, um, if you were asked um, why you need OT, it's why does your child need OT? So has anyone come to you and said that he needs OT or are you just saying, oh, my child needs OT? And if you're saying that, oh, my child needs OT, why are you saying that? And when you want something like that and you go into an IEP meeting, you've got to know your stuff, okay? I don't say this ever, like I've said many a times, to offend anybody, but I want you to know your stuff, okay? I want you to go into that meeting. I want you to be focused. I want you to know what you want, why you want it, and know how to back it up, okay? Because those are the three things you have to know how to do, which is know what you want. I want OT. I want PT, whatever it is. My child needs special, a uh, special, um, reading class or whatever the school holds, but I always say a reading specialist for children with special needs. So they have individual reading, not group. Um, and you want to make sure that you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted as far as is the occupational therapist. If you get an IEE qualified, highly qualified, how many children with autism or whatever disability they have, have has that occupational therapist worked with? Um, do they have five plus years experience? These are the things that you want to make sure is happening. So when you go into that meeting, Serena, where you said that you wanted OT, you can't just go in there and say, oh, I want OT, because of course they're going to come back and ask you why you need OT. So then you need to be on your feet as far as why you need OT. I need OT for my son because he's having a lot of trouble with tying his shoes. He's having a lot of trouble with um, coordination issues and holding his pencil and he's holding and grasping it. And he's not doing, um, it, it can be, you know, he's not writing on the line and his writing is all over the place. And um, so you need to state several things in which he is having difficulty with based off his disability and the fact that these difficulties are affecting his education. He's not writing on the line. He's not writing, you know, um, legibly. Um, he's not holding the pencil right. Those are all OT things. He doesn't know how to cut. He doesn't know how to um, paste. All those things are occupational therapy um, types of things that are done. And um, also another thing that they do in occupational therapy, which I think is fabulous, is um, a training based off of sensory. So if a child has a lot of sensory issues, um, they have training where they put on headphones and they sit on this thing that goes around and around and then it stops. I'll have to get the name of it. I have the name written down. My daughter used to do it, so I'll post it below. Um, but it was an amazing training, astronaut training. That's what it's called, astronaut training. So it helps children with sensory issues that, um, that are really having a whole bit of trouble with the whole spatial and having a lot of meltdowns based off things that are going on with things around them. So they put on headphones, they listen to music and they're put on this little thing that turns and then the occupational therapist stops it every once in a while. And it kind of has them focus back on where they are in their plane. Does that make sense? So when you go into an IEP meeting to sum this up, Sarita, you have to make sure that you can say, my child needs occupational therapy because this, 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 and this, and his impact of disability is because 
of these, these things are due to the impact of disability. Okay. And the impact of disability is what is affecting these things. So put it back and forth on them and then say him not having occupational therapy due to the need of his, the impact of his disability, he will then lose coordination. He will have more issues with sensory. So go back to all those things that you were talking about. He's not tying his shoes. That's a functional living, you know, type of thing that he has to be able to do. Um, same with cutting. Um, so these are things that you need to then learn the verbiage to then say to them of how it's going to then impact him. And then they can't ask you, why do you need OT? Because you just told them literally everything. You told them why it's needed due to the disability, which is the impact of that disability is affecting occupational therapy needs. Okay, so that's one. Then you're telling them if those needs aren't met, this is what's going to happen hypothetically, but they have to go by that because nothing is concrete because you have to try it to find out. And so as long as you're going off of the impact of disability, they have to go off that hypothetical of these things could impact him and could happen and he could regress in these areas if he doesn't have that. Okay, so these are the arguments you've got to have when you go into that meeting and you're requesting something. Stop, parents, stop. I'm going to tell you now, stop going into IEP meetings unprepared. Don't go into an IEP meeting and say, I want this, 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 and this, and not know how to back it up. Okay, practice, <laughs> set up an appointment with me, go to another, you know, advocate, whatever you got to do, you need to do it. Okay. I understand that going on Google PhD and Google is not sufficient. I did it. We all have done it. it. It gives us information. It helps us know things, but it doesn't teach us how to implement it. So it goes along with when I was an educator and I taught you cannot just say, hey, guys, I want you to go and Google this and Google the map and Google all of these things. I don't know if my, if it went off. Am I still live, guys? I don't know if it's, am I still live? Can you guys hear me? It says it's still recording. So let me see if it's just a Facebook issue. Let me know if you guys can still hear me. Okay, I'm gonna kind of log back on to see if it's still there. If not, I will get off and log back in. Okay, it just says error loading. So can you guys still hear me? Yes, you're still live. Okay, yeah, it just says error loading or whatever. Okay, so, okay, gosh, what was I saying? Um. Anybody want to post what I was on to? Because I totally like lost it with this going off. Um, I think I was talking about how you, you need to not go in unprepared. I would much rather you, okay, good. <laughs> um, I would much rather you literally wait, all right? Get an advocate in your area or honestly, I do, I do not advise that. You know, you need to learn and I don't care who you go with. I want you to get the help. But what I want you to understand is don't get somebody to go babysit you. Don't get somebody to go hold your hand. You know, a lot of people have said to me, oh, it's, it's better to have somebody. Is, is it working still? Yeah, I know it says error loading, but am I still live? Let me know, because it says I'm still live. So let me know. I'll hold on for a second. It says live. Still live. Okay. 
yeah, it just, I don't know, it's weird. Okay, so message me here if I'm, I'm not live. I don't know what's going on. It does say error loading, so I don't know. Let me pull it off and see. Okay, it says live again. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I have my phone in front of me now. So it just says, basically what I'm saying is, I don't care who you go to. I really don't, as long as you get the help that you need and make sure that whatever advocate you go to knows their stuff. You don't want, a lot of times, a lot of the agencies who that is kind of their general practice of support um, are not always moms, are not always people who've been through the trenches and they may know laws, but don't know how to per se advocate in the right way because it's not something that affects them. So I'm I'm kind of big on that, but it's all a preference, guys. It really is. Um, but all I'm saying is you don't need somebody to go hold your hand. That is maybe what puts me in a different arena than maybe other some advocates because I am very proactive and I want to teach other parents to be proactive as well because it's something that you're going to be so proud of. You're going to be proud of the fact that, I'm pulling my Facebook up again. You're going to be proud of the fact that you did this, that you became the CEO of your meeting. And with the knowledge and confidence that you're given, whether that be through me or someone else that's highly um, trained or knowledgeable in this area, you want to make sure that um, these are things that are being addressed, okay? You want to make sure that um, you are really focused on gaining the knowledge and, um, you know, come this new year, be ready to knock the socks off in your IEP. Be ready to really roll with this and do what's needed and appropriate for not only yourself, but your children. And I understand with, I mean, I, I had to focus today, so I was not online a lot. And um, I pray to God I'm still alive because I turned my phone off and back on. But so I'm going to pull up the questions again, um, or actually I can actually pull up Facebook. Um, but one of the things that I want you to really hone in on is this year, I want you to invest in yourself and your child. I want you to really think about what it is that you need so that you can rock your child's IEP and what type of knowledge you need, um, whether that be you need to understand certain ways to communicate or you need to learn what goals need to be had. Um, those are the things you need to focus on. All right, so I need somebody to tell me if I am live or if I'm just talking to myself. Um, I just pulled up Facebook because I wanted to just answer those last questions. So I don't know. I think what? this is just redoing. Okay, so I don't know if it cut off. It looks like it cut off. Okay. I think I cut off and I'm not live anymore. Um, so if anybody wants to post, you can just to let me know or I'll log off and log back on. All right, so let me log off and log back on.